Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, we will uh, continue our lecture series. Uh, last lecture we have seen the generic theory of uh, this model predictive static programming MPSP and we also saw this uh, some of these applications in the reusable launch vehicle and things like that, uh, re-entry guidance of reusable launch vehicle things like that. Here what you are doing here is actually uh, as I told in the last class, we will take you through some sort of uh, missile guidance problems and I will take you through a, a number of I mean essentially two class different class of missile guidance problem. And you can see the generality of the and applicability of this particular method that I am talking about actually. All these are practical problems and these are not uh, just uh, benchmark examples or things like that actually. Okay, so, we will see that one by one. So, outline of this particular lecture is some little bit philosophy of our principle of missile guidance. And then I will talk about uh, optimal missile guidance using MPSP, where uh, ballistic missile guidance as well as tactical uh, missile guidance I will talk with impact angle constraint. Uh, and also I let me also iterate, I mean repeat here, I, I mean this uh, what I am talking here is more of uh, theoretical nature. If you want to implement any of these in the real vehicle and all you have to do many other things which which is obviously not part of this, this lecture and all that actually. Okay, so, do not think that you can just take it and then directly implement, implement in your in a vehicle and all that. There will be several other uh, I mean uh, other things that you need to verify and verify rigorously rather before implementing anything like this actually. But having said that you can see the, the applicability of this particular method in two different class of problems actually under the simplified assumptions uh, that I am talking about. Uh, so, first thing is uh, what is the strategic missile guidance? Uh, this is essentially this ballistic missile guidance and all that what you talk about. It essentially is the some vehicle takes off, it lifts off, okay, from here, and then after some day, some distance, some height covered, really, your dynamic pressure goes down, and uh, that is where your uh, you can think of maneuvering your vehicle rather easily, actually. So then uh, there is something called guidance loop closure. So from there onwards, the vehicle is actually guided. Up to that is some sort of a pre-programmed. Uh, Okay, maneuver. It is not really vertical, but pre program maneuver, little bit uh, turning sort of thing, which will, uh, which will go to in the direction of target, but not really very close to that. But essentially, uh, it will also make sure that the vehicle is safe actually. So, within okay, that is the first part of uh, pitch programming and all that. And after that, there is a guidance loop closer, and here onwards, the vehicle needs to be turned actually. Okay. So, this is what will happen the vehicle will keep on turning, 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 and okay, then, then there will be some sort of a Either a thrust cut off or there is a burnout thing. Okay, that means if you if you go through with the solid motor propelled vehicle, then you have to wait until it burns out. Or if it is a liquid engine propulsion actually, then you can think of uh, cutting off the thrust anytime you want actually. Okay, so the guidance phase starts somewhere here and ends somewhere here. And it uh, at this point, what it should happen is uh, your height. I mean ultimately the location. As well as the the velocity magnitude and its direction, in, that is this uh, this flight path angle gamma, should satisfy a particular condition so that for further onwards it actually goes through some sort of a free flight, and this free flight will be target intersecting actually. Okay, this is what you are talking about is a strategic target sort of thing uh, on the surface of Earth. So essentially, it will go to uh, in the free flight mode, and uh, what you are looking for is uh, that particular trajectory which will essentially fall on the desired target actually. Yeah, that is what you are uh, is very, very fundamental or basic philosophy things like that actually. Okay. Also, it you can you can somewhat very cleverly you can see that essentially this problem is uh, can be extended to launch vehicle guidance as well. Because that what you are looking for is you are you are looking for some sort of a trajectory, okay, some sort of a condition with a lot more velocity, okay, so that it will go and actually it will come like that. Okay, that means your, your earth curvature is like that, but it the, the trajectory is not intersecting the earth actually. Okay, that means it will go round and round, and then it is, it is essentially leads to this this is a satellite orbit sort of thing actually. Okay. 
So, this particular film method what, what I am talking here is relevant to both ballistic missile guidance uh, or strategic missile guidance as well as uh, this launch vehicle guidance, ascent phase guidance actually in general. Okay. All right. Okay, so the, uh, also remember that the condition has to be such in uh, I mean has to be such that ultimately you will be able to cover this range angle actually. Essentially, this is a phi t the target range angle at from starting from one out actually that way that becomes an additional constraint actually here so that way. All right, so these are this is what the problem is philosophy is okay. Uh, and okay, before I forget, uh, remember all the corrections that needs to be done is here. And this happens to be, even though the picture is amplified a, a little bit uh, for clarity, this happens to be a very small segment of the trajectory for about something like 5 10 percent of the trajectory. So, for rest of the trajectory, for about 85 90 percent of the trajectory, happens to be just free flight actually. Okay. And uh, so, in other words, you are actually trying to kind of throw a bullet out here and throw a stone or bullet, whatever you can think about. So, that the, the, the stone after throwing, you do not have any control, but you have thrown it in such a way that it will go in this free flight uh, and then intersect the target actually. That is that's the problem here. What about the, the tactical missile guidance? Uh, see, you have got a target which is not stationary, which is, which is kind of intelligent actually. So, target keeps on moving and you are a changing vehicle. So, we try to kind of chase this vehicle ok this this ok let me this is this is the missile that we are talking about the target that we are talking about ok. The target has its velocity v t and missile has its velocity v m actually ok. And there are couple of terminologies out here uh, ok this uh, line joining the missile and target is essentially something called line of sight. And then from the horizontal uh, reference line, if you if you draw some angle, I mean this LOS is, will make some angle. That angle is nothing but LOS angle sort of thing. And then this uh, wait, wait, okay, that's the LOS angle. And with respect to the LOS angle, the velocity vector of the missile will make some angle theta m actually, and the target will make some angle theta t. Okay. So remember again that uh, this V T, the target uh, is going; it is capable of maneuvering and all that actually. So it can, uh, it can also change its velocity vector direction that way. So what way you can assure that uh, this V M is essentially guided towards that? Essentially, it should go and hit the target that way. So the one idea here is you, you have this uh, lateral acceleration generation mechanism through the lift vector. So, velocity remember the drag is along velocity vector okay, opposing that and the lift is perpendicular to that. So, we can uh, think about a lift by mass which is essentially some sort of acceleration quantity and that is called as lateral acceleration actually. So, the idea here is if you generate some sort of a lift additional lift and all that in whatever direction positive or negative either way actually, then uh, we are essentially able to change the velocity vector direction that is more important actually. So, once you change it essentially it will happen in such a way that ultimately you, you will be change a little bit here. So, that if the velocity vector goes to, of the target goes that way the velocity vector of the missile will be aligned somewhere like that ok and then it will ulti, both will ultimately go towards some sort of a collision point actually ok. And if you little bit uh, closely looking what it turns out that after some time the LOS vector what you are looking uh, looking at this LOS line the LOS vector remains parallel actually ok that means there is no change in the rotation, I mean there is no rotation of the LOS vector really actually. So, that is uh, that is what it is uh, the fundamental philosophy. So, in other words uh, you have to do something so that uh, this LOS vector should not rotate that is the whole philosophy of a classical missile guidance actually ok. So, there is a very popular missile guidance law which is called proportional navigation guidance which essentially tells you that ok you generate this AM that is your essentially the control variable in the guidance law this way that means uh, n times v m into lambda dot lambda is this and then there is a rate of change of lambda ultimately you do not want any rate of change actually you know that ok. So, guidance law happens to be something like this you generate a lift vector and this is a time varying value you know that. So, you generate a m in the as per this formula n v m lambda dot v m is already known to you from your own sensor ok. Lambda dot is again sensed through its own uh, inertial navigation system and things like that as well as the, the target tracking mechanism that means either using radar or seeker either way actually okay. typically these are the end games so you use seekers actually which will in other words you will directly see the target from, from using your own instrument actually. Okay. 
So, anyway, so this lambda dot and Vm is the only thing that you need to evaluate, okay. And then once you do that, n is just a constant number, okay. So, that your typically value is something like 3, 4, and maximum 5, probably like that, actually. Ideally, around 3. Okay. Uh, there is a reason for that, we have discussed that in one of the previous lectures as well, actually, okay. Anyway, so coming back to that, uh, this is your uh, AM, okay, typically generated that way. And it uh, it happens to be kind of an optimal guidance law in a in a restrictive assumption sense, and the, all those things we have discussed before already. Actually, there are several uh, several conditions. If it meets uh, those conditions, this is, uh, this is nothing but an optimal guidance law, provided n is selected as three. Actually, so that's the reason why n is uh, hanging around around the three value basically. That way. Anyway, so uh, I will not repeat those. Let us move on. Actually, so this is a very simple guidance law. It has been uh, it has been used in many missiles and all that actually it is it still continues to be used and there are many versions around that as well something like a true proportional uh, guide true proportional navigation guidance uh, that is called TPN then there is something called PPN pure proportional navigation guidance there is something called augmented proportional navigation guidance and, and so there is something called modified PN and uh, I mean, think like that there are various versions of that actually. But all these can be uh, dumped into uh, can be clubbed into this uh, this classical missile guidance ideas actually. Okay, so this is ultimately what it happens in the technical missile guidance sense. And remember, this picture is in 2D, and ultimately everything in aerospace happens in 3D. So there are extensions for 3D as well, actually. Okay, you have to apply this lift vector in two different directions, actually. And it is possible because uh, as a missile, you can uh, you can think of generating lift in two perpendicular directions, which are both which uh, which are both perpendicular to the VM direction. Okay. Perpendicular to VM is a plane, and in that plane you construct, construct these two different lines, uh, orthogonal to each other, and then try to generate in two different directions. Actually, that's how you take care of this 3D problem. Actually, anyway, these are the fundamental philosophy of missile guidance, both strategic as well as uh, tactical. Actually, and to summarize, many missile guidance laws are actually inspired from observing nature. That is, as I told, the proportional navigation guidance law is based on. And here in this collision triangle, I mean, this is what you saw here is essentially what is called as collision triangle, basically. Okay. We have to assure that the collision triangle is uh, satisfied. Actually. And there are control theoretic uh, guidance laws also available. That means you pose some sort of economic, relative kinematics, and all maybe in a little bit uh, point mass dynamic sense and nothing like that, linearized point mass dynamics or something like that. And then the, the, there are control theory um, things available, which essentially tells you that somehow I, I know that this uh, this line of sight uh, rate should should be zero. So what should I do? What feedback law should I use so that the line of sight rate remains remains zero actually? Okay. So these kind of ideas have been explored, but uh, they typically use this linear dynamics actually okay, because, because using that you can get a closed form solution and then proceed further for analysis and, and synthesis basically. However, remember uh, linear, neither linearization nor, nor this uh, this observing nature is actually a very natural way of doing things or very rigorous mathematical way of doing things rather. So what it happens is uh, the system dynamics turns out to be typically non-linear. And hence, uh, nonlinear optimal control theory is somewhat, in my view, a, a natural tool for obtaining effective missile guidance laws. Actually, okay. So let's see how to do that. But then, uh, the, as I told, if you once you have a nonlinear optimal control formulation, then uh, typically um, gets into these computational issues. However, because of the recent developments like that, uh, like MPSP and other things, it's possible to give some of this actually. Okay. By the way. All this, this, uh, this MPSP, this, uh, I mean, adaptive critics, uh, the SNAC, and then this uh, STRE theta d, and then all this. I'll also talk a little bit about uh, model practice. I mean, uh, uh, model practice static programming MPSP is what I'm talking about, and then the pseudo spectral method, and also this model predictive control process. These, all these things are actually developing towards this online application sort of thing actually. Okay. Anyway, so these are the things. So, so essentially, what I'm telling you is uh, this nonlinear optimal control theory is a natural tool to obtain effective missile guidance laws. Actually, but the problem here is how to address this computational, uh, I mean, issue. And uh, as we saw in the last lecture, MPSP happens to be one of the candidates which essentially guarantees you computational efficiency as well as uh, guarantees your terminal conditions being met as a hard constraint, which is more important in missile guidance actually. 
all right so this is uh, when you do that attempt to do that first you need to have some sort of a relative kinematics or relative dynamics between them and this is what will uh, what will happen okay point mass missile model with plot and non rotating earth if you take it is very easy to analyze that x dot happens to be v sin f this is x and this is y let's say and this happen x dot is nothing but v cosine gamma and uh, h dot height dot is nothing but v sin gamma these two are very easy to see but these two if you i mean this v dot and gamma v dot and gamma dot if you see that okay essentially this is nothing but uh, force balance uh, in the direction of v and perpendicular to v so mv dot is essentially the net the total force acting along the along the v direction that means mv dot is nothing but uh, the force uh, component coming out of the thrust which is t cosine alpha minus the drag acting on that and minus the gravity component mg sin gamma mg sin gamma uh, will uh, will act on this particular uh, weak i mean this mg happens to be like that so mg sin gamma with some some component here in this direction actually which will also oppose to the mv dot component so mv dot is t cos alpha minus d minus mg sin gamma and hence hence v dot is nothing but 1 by m of all that actually similarly if you see the force balance net force balance uh, net force acting on the uh, perpendicular to the velocity that means the lift direction then essentially it is t sin alpha get okay, t sin alpha plus lift itself minus mg cos gamma okay this direction actually okay so this thing uh, if you divide it by i mean if you see that that's nothing but mb gamma dot happens in that direction you can i mean typically you can think about this uh, this gamma dot acting on that and there is mb and then thing like that actually okay that means it's like a centrifugal force sort of thing so you can see that way so gamma dot is nothing but 1 by mb into this quantity so so if you just take a 2d problem and then you to assume that is a flat earth and non rotating earth and all that these are the system dynamics that is necessary first two is uh, represents the position coordinate and these two represents the velocity component dynamic variables and again if you go to the 3d sense then uh, what you need is y dot also here and what you need is psi dot also here okay psi dot or sometimes people call it chi dot actually so v gamma and chi together and uh, x y and h together will define the position actually x y and h together will define the position v gamma and chi will define the velocity vector completely actually so the so what you if you just take 2d problem then these two are kind of not needed four equations are good enough actually okay. and uh, and also remember this uh, t this uh, d and l will contain the alpha terms actually so what you see simply as cosine alpha and sin alpha here they doesn't they don't appear just like that that way d is essentially a function of cd and cd is a function of, uh, of alpha actually similarly l is a function of cl and cl is a function of alpha so this happens what happens in in phase plane when you were sort of thing in 2d but if you take talk 3d then uh, the, this sigma also has to be uh, taken into account velocity vector i mean the vehicle roll and things like that has to be taken into account actually and then alpha and sigma will like together as some sort of guidance parameters actually that way all right then point mass missile model with spherical and non this is what happens in in flat earth sense flat and non rotating earth okay what happens in spherical and non rotating earth that's what uh, we are going more and more uh, towards reality but the how much reality you want to get up for depends on the particular mission actually in other words if your vehicle happens to be in the range of 20 30 kilometers you really don't bother about this non i mean the spherical nature of the earth and all that but it if the if the target range happens to be quite far, far away like so let's say 1000 km 2000 km like that then you have to account for the curvature of the earth actually so essentially it will lead to spherical earth now whether you want to have rotating or non rotating effect again that depends on your flight time of flight and your latitude of, of launch point and target point Dif latitude difference between launch point and target point actually so that is uh, that uh, again the point here is, is uh, you take that much complexity what is required for the problem actually but nevertheless it is it is possible to handle uh, various degrees of complexity actually so the point mass missile model with the spherical and non rotating earth typically what we use in, in strategic missile guidance and all that is something like this so you don't no more talk about uh, x dot and h dot and all that but uh, r dot is is kind of h dot r is nothing but uh, radius of earth plus height so r dot is h dot actually so this is v sin gamma and then this uh, theta dot is now the the reference angle just from from uh, so for a particular uh, reference line actually 
So, this theta dot uh, you can think about this may be this point is your launch point ok. Then uh, joining that to center of earth you will define the reference line and then uh, with respect to that reference line you can talk about an angle theta with respect to the current position of the vehicle. If you join to the center of earth the angle between the two is nothing but theta and that uh, theta dot rate of change of that angle depends on the, the tangential component of the velocity vector which is nothing but v cos, v cos gamma okay, v cos gamma happens to be like that. You can think about ok what is happening here in this picture is uh, this is nothing but the surface of earth ok the radius of uh, radio I mean the circle V and circle A is uh, parallel to surface uh, surface of earth uh, ok uh, but uh, happening at the current location of the vehicle actually ok that is where the all the dynamics happens like that is that way. But remember this uh, this various velocity vector can be anywhere ok. So, this velocity vector is not tangential to the, the circle ok. So, what you are telling here is let us imagine one more circle here ok which will for which the velocity vector is tangential actually ok. And then it turns out that ok if you join it to the center of the, this particular circle you can think about something like here and this uh, this the radius r big capital R and this the radius small r and all that actually ok. And this happens to be this r e the radius of earth basically ok. So, all this uh, little bit uh, force balance analysis if you do it properly then all that uh, you will end up with uh, this set of equation. Let me not go through the derivation part of it, but I think uh, if you just look a little bit carefully what is m v dot for example ok. m v dot is the all the forces acting along that direction again it is the, the component. So, here the guidance parameter is the, the thrust deflection angle let us say that means how much uh, the thrust is deflected from velocity vector direction. It uh, do not get eluded by this this alpha is not really aerodynamic uh, angle of attack per se ok. But if you think the vehicle is still under atmosphere and then uh, the thrust is uh, along the body of the I mean body x axis of the vehicle which is typically true then this alpha happens to be angle of attack as well actually. But if it is exo atmosphere uh, mission then there is nothing called angle of attack actually okay. So, think about that uh, this alpha being something like a uh, thrust deflection angle with respect to velocity vector. So, that is uh, as far it is. So, t cosine alpha minus t minus mg sin gamma again. So, that that part happens to be like that, but gamma dot will have a little more complex uh, you see earlier it was only this much. But now, this this additional term will come because some sort of a centrifugal force you can think about uh, this force what you are looking here is like a centrifugal force with respect to this particular uh, uh, circle basically okay. so the, and mg gamma dot happens to be in the in that particular direction actually. Okay. More than that you can see some some textbooks on this uh, this dynamic uh, equation derivations all that actually ok. Now, coming to the first problem we will talk about uh, a ballistic missile guidance uh, with solid motor especially a uh, ballistic missile when I talk is that these are strategic vehicles and all. And again and again I, I emphasize here uh, these are all theoretical studies I mean uh, the uh, lot of things are actually now nowhere close to practical things, uh, but essentially we have taken the as much realistic things as possible to experiment uh, in an academic environment. So, that the, the conceptual things can be kind of verified actually. What you are what you are aiming here is verification of the technique rather than uh, going for a particular mission and trying to kind of mechanize everything around that actually ok. All right. So, just a little bit of motivation why you want to have uh, solid motors uh, first of all uh, this uh, this class of vehicles what is what is uh, strategic vehicles are typically meant for deterrence deterrence actually that means, uh, you, these are not uh, kind of attacking vehicles and all, but if some enemy already attacks us uh, in a way then there is no choice so you have to retaliate back and things like that. So, that means, the reaction time happens to be small actually. So, that means, you really want quick firing. And quick firing is possible only with solid motors not in liquid engines because when you have liquid engine propelled vehicles it requires lot of preparation times and all that actually ok. Why for and all there are different uh, reasons for that the liquid I mean the uh, the fuel tanks has to be pressurized well and it has to be it cannot be done uh, it cannot be kept like that for, for a long time. Uh, the liquid uh, has to be pumped in uh, as and when it is required uh, because it is also corrosive liquid and all that. So, there are reasons for that actually why it cannot be done ok. But here it is possible because once you uh, have a solid motor you just uh, have a casing and then just uh, maintain it to keep on doing that actually whereas and when it is needed you can simply start, start firing it actually. So, with very minimal preparation you can uh, go for the mission actually. 
and there are reasons for uh, there are other reasons as well. Uh, essentially, if you see solid motors, there is nothing called uh, slushing because there is no no liquid actually. So, slushing problem is simply not there, and uh, and there is nothing nothing called tail wax dog effect also. Okay, TWD stands for tail wax dog. Typically, dog wax tail, but uh, there is a concept in aerospace which talks about tail wax dog actually. That means if you talk about liquid engines, there is a huge there is a there is a kind of engine swiveling concept actually. That means, the entire engine is a kind of swiveled using this motors and all and the, this is also a dynamic correction. It is just not one side correction and stop actually. It keep on changing left and right like that that way. So, when when the frequency of this oscillation happens to be close to the natural frequency of the vehicle, the vehicle goes through this violent oscillation and all. Essentially, there is a mission failure actually. So, those things those things are not here in solid motors because essentially there is no engine. So, in the engine swiveling, swiveling mechanism is not there actually. So, what is there is uh, essentially this uh, uh, nozzle deflection ideas and all. So, the, for that uh, do not require that kind of heavy moments and all that. So, it is typically not there actually. Okay. The cost part I will not let into go let it uh, I mean I will uh, not like to go into that, but typically it, it turns out that uh, essentially solid motor vehicles happens to be slightly cheaper actually. Okay. What is the advantage? Uh, so, what are the penalties actually? Okay. So, penalty is there is absolutely no thrust cut off facility. I mean, there are limited attempts people have done and all that that is a different story with some plugs and then take out the chamber pressure drops and then the fire gets extinguished, but we do not want to talk about that. In general what happens is there is no thrust cut off facility. Uh, once you fire it has to it has to exhaust its energy whatever is there and then it has to uh, I mean do the mission actually. So, you do not have this uh, luxury of cutting off the thrust as and when you wish actually. Okay. Then there is this issue of one out time being uncertain. And there is an issue of non manipulative thrust time curve also. If the thrust time magnitude cannot be increased or decreased. So, on the other hand, liquid engine is uh, like some sort of a car engine actually. If you want more power uh, or more thrust, you burn more actually. That, that kind of thing can be done here. Uh, but here it, it cannot be. Whatever is stipulated or whatever is pre selected uh, thrust time curve, around that it will operate. And also remember, thrust time curve, whatever is specified, then it is, it is not going to happen exactly like that. There will be variations around that actually. And part of that will be kind of known variation, and part of that is uncertain. They are typically not known actually that way. Nevertheless, it has to happen. Your guidance must end at the burnout point, and that should satisfy the target intersecting trajectory and all that actually. So the essentially, the guidance part becomes quite difficult here. Now, system dynamics. Uh, these are the variables uh, what you are looking here, and then alpha I redefine as something like a shear angle guidance, uh, guidance parameter delta sort of thing. And using that, this system dynamics is rewritten something like this, and neglecting the earth rotation actually. Earth curvature is taken into account, but earth rotation is not actually. Okay. So, these are the system dynamics. Okay. Then uh, there is some concept uh, this going back to the same picture. The beauty part is this pre flight equation is kind of known if you take about a, a non rotating spherical earth. Okay, and this part of the trajectory is actually given by this sort of equation. This is all uh, derived uh, in the 1950s and all that actually. Okay. This is the equation which will govern this part of the trajectory. Now, what happens is okay, this is the current, uh, this is the any, any point of time this is r and this is my angle theta basically, what you see here. So, if I really think about my this target hitting sort of idea, target intercepting sort of idea, this some um, this equation. From this equation, you can derive the so called this heat equation and all that. What it turns out is you just substitute r as r t okay, and then substitute this theta as something like phi b o actually. Okay. Phi b o is nothing but this uh, phi t minus phi 0 sort of thing. Okay. This phi burnout, okay. this, this angle what you are looking for actually. I okay. am uh, sorry, this, this angle what you are looking for. This angle is nothing but phi 0 minus phi t. So, this angle has to be. Uh, I mean satisfying here basically. Okay. Anyway, so this is the part what you are looking for. More on that you can see Jerkins book and all that actually. There is a, uh, I mean very neat book, a very popular book actually all over the world, which is uh, fundamentals of uh, uh, tactical and strategic missile guidance and all actually. So if you take that, uh, you will see some of the details of this uh, pre flight equation, heat equation, all that. There are papers by Eddie Whelan in all the long time as I told around 1950s and all which is uh, where these equations are derived first. Anyway, we will go back to our system dynamics and then this is our objective. So, this will essentially give us this output that we are that we require at when the vehicle goes here, 
my output which is my location variable let us say has to satisfy this equation actually that is all I will say. So, we talk about this gives us the system dynamics and then this gives us this heat equation gives us this this output equation actually ok. So, once you have a system dynamics discretized system dynamics and there is a discretized output equation we are ready to apply MPSP actually in a way. So, we have done that and then uh, these are the some of the other things that uh, that is uh, coming into picture ok. The discretization of the state equation for control computation I have used the Euler method ok. However, for the state prediction part of it we have used RK4, RK4 method actually. Okay. Remember you have to predict there is a prediction correction set of mechanism you have to see the previous control history predict where it you are going see the error and then correct the control history actually. So, the prediction part you use RK4 and the correction part you have to operate with some math algebra and all. So, there you have used this uh, this uh, Euler method and all that actually. So, the algebra becomes simpler actually. Okay. So, then the step size uh, we take in 100 milliseconds typically this are around that figure actually in, in reality. And then guidance loop closure happens uh, after 1 second of uh, burn out time actually ok. And remember we need a bunch of derivatives they were all computed symbolically and iteration mode folding has also been implemented, but without that also results are alright actually. So, these are some of the results. So, you can see that various range actually ok. For various ranges if you even start with same initial condition the algorithm takes care and ultimately gives you this uh, this control history. It adjusts the control history in such a way that no matter where you want the target suppose you want this 3500, 4000, 4500 wherever you want ok starting from the same initial condition the control history is all happening here in this segment only ok. After that this part is a free flight trajectory sort of thing ok. So, the point here is it is working and working very well rather actually and these are the corresponding thrust time curve uh, that, if, uh, that is also there. But also remember this is uh, let us say suppose the middle part is what is uh, what was prescribed to us. However, in reality it can happen both downwards uh, with larger burning time or upwards with smaller burning time actually. Okay. For these things we can actually there is a need for uh, online uh, thrust readjustment depending on the motor performance actually ok. That uh, details I will skip here, but essentially the idea here is uh, as you start flying you will see whether the you are actually underperforming this way ok, the thrust is uh, the thrust that is uh, expected is actually coming out to be lower or it is overperforming that the thrust is coming out to be higher actually ok. If it comes out to be higher it will burn out faster, if it comes out to be lower it will burn slow and hence it will burn out later actually ok. So, the, the fundamental idea here is uh, no matter what it does uh, the area under the curve remains same. That means, if I really did know this trajectory, this baseline trajectory and also the area under the curve which is obvious anyway and then uh, depending on the performance of the motor online I can actually redefine this this trajectory thrust time curve and this read uh, I mean this redefined thrust time has to be used uh, for, com com for computing your uh, your guidance command and, uh, and hence you really what you need is an, an online algorithm where you can implement this actually ok. So, this is what it is and also just a small comment uh, the realistic uh, uh, I mean solid motors and all will will be in a very different uh, shape uh, it they they call something called M curve and all that, uh, but here the experiments are not done with respect to those these are these are the thrust time curves generated artificially from some sort of a vehicle sizing study and things like that from very first uh, fundamental principle using the textbook analysis sort of thing actually ok. So, like that that way. Anyway, the point here is uh, not only it meets various target condition, but it also meets the same target with uh, whether the vehicle is underperforming or over vehicle motor is under underperforming or overperforming. If, if you start with the same initial condition, aim for the same target, but uh, whether the motor is not performing as per the predicted normal well nominal condition, but it, uh, either it over predicts or under predicts, then the thrust time curve is readjusted online and hence the uh, wherever you start readjusting there will be a different trajectory actually ok from there. And then the point here is the online algorithm uh, happens to work invariably actually. Then how about computational time that is what you have been claimed that uh, this method is computationally quite efficient and all. So, obviously, there is a necessity of computational time as well, but this is typically done in a different platform there are real time computers available and then algorithms needs to be coded and it has to be evaluated properly and it has to be 
further evaluated in uh, this online uh, I mean this onboard computer uh, platform and all that we have not done anything of that we have simply taken the same PC that you have used and try to kind of evaluate how much time it takes actually okay and this is evaluated in the Pentium 4 slightly older version of the computer with 512 MB RAM and programming happens to be the MATLAB 7 platform the first control update which is the longest one it talks about uh, I mean it takes about 1.75 seconds actually so, typically uh, a code written in a low level language will require much lesser computational time and if your code is optimized also and it runs only that thing nothing else then obviously, the the real time issues can be evaluated properly, but however, you can think that okay, it can operate safely about 1 is 200 ratio sort of thing actually okay, or maybe sometimes people tell it is 1 is to 200 ratio rather actually. Remember, MATLAB is a line interpreter. This is um, compared to that, the code will actually generate a compiled code and then try to run fast actually that way. Okay. So the point here is this 1.7 seconds. Remember, this is not minutes or hours; it's seconds actually. So within two seconds, you are able to get a control history update actually okay, in MATLAB platform. Okay, and then where the background processes are also running actually. Okay. So, in that sense, I think uh, people do agree that it uh, you know, in an online implementation it, it is possible to do actually. Now, what about this performance, the uh, cost function performance with respect to so let us say something like a true optimal control formulation because MPSP is ideally speaking cannot be called an optimal method, but rather some people try to kind of uh, uh, emphasize that it has to be called a suboptimal approach actually. The reasons for that again and one of that happens to be because we are stopping we, uh, because uh, we are actually bothered about output convergence. We are not waiting until cost function converges and all that actually. But how about looking at this actually? Suppose uh, the output has converged then where does the cost function lead to? It may be a slightly different uh, control history per se. Okay. However, it has the cost function sense is essentially leads to almost the same value. Okay. Because there is some energy loss here, I mean area loss here, area gain here, and things like that, that way. Okay, or probably you can think about uh, this is the NLP solution. The blue one is the benchmark one, let's say. And this all from uh, direct transcription, which I this is using NLP approach and all, which I'll uh, will discuss in some of the lectures later. Basically, essentially, it actually solves tries to solve the full optimal control problem as it is actually that way. So compared to that, uh, this particular method that you are talking about, uh, well, this has to be it is not MPC, it has to be MPSP basically. Okay. So, this this part, this this part is M, MPSP and this part is NLP, which is uh, transcription method sort of thing. All right. So, this is uh, uh, this is the closeness that you are looking at. Uh, uh, okay. So, what message is? Uh, the MPSP actually led, leads to very close to optimal control solution actually. Then there are issues, uh, the problem does not stop there. There are issues like okay, you have assumed that the uh, uh, thrust time curve, uh, the area of the thrust time curve remains constant, but it so happens that uh, it need not be accurately known basically. That means, uh, there may be uncertainty on that value itself basically. So, whatever scaling you are doing or even the nominal profile that you are using is actually un incorrect because the energy content may be different actually. Okay. So, in that sense you actually extended the work a little bit further, I am not going to talk you too much on that uh, because that is uh, out of this optimal control domain sort of thing. But the whole idea is we first assume that up to 90 percent it is actually zero. 90 percent of the predicted energy is actually available without fail. Okay. So, up to that we will design an MPS guidance. And then for the remaining part, we will switch over to this dynamic inversion based guidance, details of which you can find it in our references and all that, which will actually ensure, see this MPSP guidance will ensure that you, you assess the error goes to 0. But what is more important is error should stay at 0 also basically. Okay. So, essentially the whole problem here boils down to because the, the error function can cut the point several things actually. So, this, this is error and this is 0 value. So, there are several places it can cut. Now, if it is a liquid engine, you can stop anywhere and the job is done. But if it is solid engine, it, uh, I mean it has to it has to cut where the burnout point actually. It has to cut at TBO only. That is the major restriction. What happening in addition to that, what happens here is the what you are talking here 
is error value should uh, wherever this is positive or negative either way wherever it it starts it should go to 0 but going to 0 is not sufficient it has to stay at 0 at a finite segment actually okay now if it stays at 0 then any time any time the thrust burnout happens uh, in this segment okay what you are looking for okay in this segment happens to be in so energy insensitive that means the error the error is still 0 anyway basically okay so so going to zero part this is the first part that is uh, that this part is ensured by mpsp but staying at zero is uh, is ensured by dynamic inversion and also remember there was a necessity that if you aim something like that then you also aim that while going to zero the derivative should be also close to zero and the derivative see in other words the, the approach should be like the the way i have shown you actually if the approach is somewhat like this let's say then you are talking about an infinite slope here and then suddenly correcting to zero there will be control discontinuity and, uh, and the any discontinuity at the end is, is extremely difficult to track. You just can't do it actually. So, so this is uh, not uh, not an option basically. So what you really, really need, okay, sorry. What you really need is something like uh, this kind of a thing, okay. Oh, sorry. Where the error should not only go to zero, but it should stay at zero. While going to zero, the derivative should also uh, approach towards zero. Actually, so then maintaining becomes easier. Actually, okay. So that thing has been done a little bit. I'm not going to talk too much on that. Uh, but essentially, it it has been done. It has assured. And the whole idea here is it actually kind of eliminates this uh, this so-called VTP requirement, the velocity trimming package they call. So what it does is, uh, even though you talk about a solid motor, then uh, along with your warhead, you take essentially take a small liquid engine, and then derive the benefit uh, that the liquid engine can be manipulated. The liquid engine can be used to cut off the thrust any time you want, actually. And because it is it is sitting on the uh, along with the warhead, the correction can can uh, can be done any time along the path, actually. It, remember this. You're going back to this uh, this thing. Imagine a situation where the there is a war. I mean, this uh, there is a warhead. This the warhead keeps on going here. So along with the warhead, there is a small this liquid engine. So any amount of inaccuracy that you see somewhere, it can be corrected any point during the free flight. Actually, okay, the entire free flight is available to you. Okay, so again, this is done in the initial phase as much as possible because that is uh, where the sensitivity is high, and hence the control effectiveness is high. So very close uh, between this point, one or point to the uh, I mean this uh, maximum height point. Okay, within that the can the solution I mean the correction is typically applied actually in general. Okay. Anyway, so that is uh, the velocity trimming package they call. There is a small liquid engine which goes along with the warhead. But the problem with that is uh, anything that you have along with the warhead, there are there are two things. One is it eats out uh, the space that and it also adds to payload weight. That means what you are doing is actually you are talking about something like a compromise in uh, in warhead uh, size. Or you are talking about compromising something like uh, the range actually. Okay. So the whole idea is, uh, can you really eliminate VTP or at least minimize that requirement to a very great value, basically? Okay. So that is what we are, we claim that it probably can be done. With looking at the results, it, it turns out to be slightly more promising actually. The result part, you can see the all the results. Uh, not only they are going to zero, but they are actually staying at zero towards the end. That means any time that the, the burnout can happen, but still your error will continue to be zero, and hence all of that will be target intercepting actually. All right, so this is what it is actually, uh, and then again computational time point of view. This time it was uh, some sort of some sort of a similar platform and all. We also use okay first control update is actually 0.47 seconds. Uh, it happens to be quite smaller than the other one also basically. Okay. So the conclusion of this particular problem, it uh, I mean, it talks about uh, the, the algorithm uh, is uh, it successfully works. And tested for various ranges, it uh, leads to high accuracy. And remember, accuracy in the in the sense of plus or minus meters actually is nothing. I mean, the, what you are looking for is even if the accuracy happens to be of the order of two three kilometers, it is very much okay. But what you are talking here is a strategic warhead sort of thing, which is uh, with the wild area uh, kind of destruction basically. So having plus or minus one meter is, is extremely good actually. It's uh, it's the hard constraint. I mean, the, this happens because the final constraint is put as a hard constraint actually. Also observe that it's computationally quite efficient, and hence it uh, is a possibility of implementing it online in future actually. Okay. 
Also, we have done comparison studies uh, with NLP solution which store which actually slows uh, some sort of very close match actually. So, this is about the ballistic missile problem. Then there are energy insensitivity of uh, guidance design extension of that using this uh, dynamic inversion uh, along with MPSP. Essentially, meets the specification it takes about some sort of uh, robust guidance algorithm. Okay. So, it is essentially it makes it a kind of uh, energy insensitive in, in a limited sense actually at least. Okay. All right, what next? So, as I told it does not necessarily act on only a strategic thing, the conventional guidance also it works. So, let us go quickly go through that that kind of idea. So, here I am talking about some missile guidance problem with impact angle constraint as well. So, what you mean is not only you have to hit the target, a conventional target of course, with very very good accuracy, but at the time of hitting the target, it also there should be some angle constraint for the velocity vector and there are reasons for that also which I will summarize here. So, why angle constraint? The very first thing that you can see is the announcement of varied lethality. It means there are certain targets for which there are vulnerable parts either front or top and things like that. So, if you talk about that kind of target, then your announcement of the varied lethality happens only when you attack from the front actually okay, or attack from the top like that actually. Okay. So, that is one reason why you want to put uh, angle constant guidance. Okay, and there are some certain things like uh, well, I will retrace a little bit here. There is something called an uh, I mean announcement of varied lethality. In other words, if you approach the target in a particular direction, at least in the velocity vector sense and all, okay, the essentially the uh, if once you explode your own warhead, uh, then the damage on the target will be more actually. Okay. So, for example, there is a front attack and all that, the target is uh, target is coming there, okay target is coming something like that. If you go in a front attack mode and then explode it, there is a very large chance that you will capture the target actually. Okay. But if you if you go some other direction, then then suppose you have attack it, I mean some from this direction let us say, maybe other mission objectives, but it will explode this way. But by, it, but by the time it, the, the fragments cross this, the target should be somewhere here. If it is here or here, it has already crossed or it is about to cross before crossing, then it is virtually useless actually. So, uh, so that is what the forward lethality is, is all about actually. Okay. 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 Now, coming to that, uh, there are certain vulnerable parts or uh, you want to attack the weak location of the target. For example, top attacks for tanks. So, the tank there is a main hole for the so that the driver can can, it, uh, can enter the tank. And hence, there is there are some uh, weak parts in the tank. Uh, it is not actually armored heavily from the top, whereas it is armored heavily with a, with a thick metal seats and all that from the side and all that actually. So, if you really want to attack a tank, then better do that in a stop attack sense actually. Okay. And there are certain certain mission demands, for example, bunker busters and, and terrorist hideouts in urban areas and like that. There where you again want to go in a particular direction only, either to minimize collateral damage or to minimize the mission itself demands that actually. If a bunker buster means there are certain layers of concrete that you have to explore go deeper and deeper and things like that. So, unless the velocity vector is perpendicular uh, to the surface, the vehicle may escape and go inside the earth and it does not serve any purpose actually. So, then similarly, if you have this uh, terrorist hideouts in urban areas, there will be multiple buildings and all. Unless you come from the top or in a particular direction sense, you will actually your other uh, structures and all may come on the way actually. So, it will not do the uh, job as you can. So, the mission demand mission itself demands that you go in a specific direction sort of thing. Then there are ideas like coordinated attack by multiple munitions. That means, if you have three four things uh, let us say small UAVs and all and they have to go and attack from a particular direction only, then only combined effects will be maximum actually. If uh, individually they, they attack in a different sense, different location, different direction and all that the combined effect may not be much, but if it go all of them go to a same location in the same direction sort of thing then the effectiveness is much more actually. Now, people talk about not only the same location and same angle, but they also talk about same time actually. That means, the 4 or 5 UAVs will be there, they will all go at the same time, same location, same angle of the target actually. The effectiveness will be much, much, much higher basically that way. Then, there are also reasons for something like countermeasures for enhanced stealthiness. Uh, for example, if your radar is looking in some particular direction, you want to, uh, I mean, the enemy radar is looking in certain particular direction, you do not want to go in that direction and then make yourself visible to enemy. 
So, if you go in the backward direction sense in all that. So, for them in those situations uh, you, can, you can think of it as something like a countermeasure actually. Okay. So, it has done for for uh, for enhanced stealthiness. So, you can introduce this, this countermeasures actually. You can also think about range enhancement. It is typically not a range enhancement formulation, but it happens indirectly. Because if you if you happen to something like let us say a top attack, then you have to actually top attack of a of a target which is of the same altitude uh, or above you basically let us say. Then what happens is the, the vehicle the missile has to climb even further that means the, the, the atmosphere density comes down by flying at the high altitude and once the atmosphere density is, is down the drag is less and if the drag is less the range can be more actually. Okay. So, this is what is the, is the range enhancement indirectly sort of thing. Then sometimes it is done to increase the observability of the target also. That means, you purposefully take a maneuver sideways and all that. So, that you can see the target better actually. So, that is that is another reason why you want to have this this angle constant gradients and all. So, there are several reasons I have listed out only about 6, 7. But there are some of the reasons also for which we really need this this angle constant gradients actually. Now, existing methods of 3D guidance, okay, this particular thing we are interested in talking about guidance in 3D sense uh, and then uh, angle constraints will happen in two angle sense actually. So, what is the motivation for that? Uh, okay, the 3D PN and augmented PN laws are available, okay, but uh, I mean there are couple of not too many, there are couple of them are available. However, very less of them we will actually talk about uh, 3D impact angle constraint sense. Okay. Angle constraint will be talk, discussed if you see the literature, most of them will talk about 2D only. Okay. But here the, the we are aim was to kind of experiment in 3D domain okay. and then existing solutions uh, which are which are already there, okay, they are either non-optimal or based on kinematic only. Now, what we want to extend it further, we want to talk about the full nonlinear uh, dynamic uh, point mass equations actually and then you using those equations you want to design guidance laws actually. Okay. And uh, okay, so, the, the challenges uh, first thing is the strong nonlinear coupling between the elevation angle and azimuth angle basically that should be accounted for. What you really need is uh, 0 or near 0 mist distances. Remember, unless there is a zero miss distance sort of thing, most of the angle constraints are meaningless actually. In other words, if you only when you hit the target, then only angle becomes much more important actually. Okay. Otherwise, it is there, but it is not the, that much important actually in a way. Okay. All right. So, as I told, two angle constraints uh, at the same time has to be ensured. That is called 3D angle constraint. And then latex demand has to be minimum on the way also. Later less less on demand has to be as minimum as possible on the way actually. So, what is the problem objective now? The problem objective is to design a 3D optimal guidance law for maneuvering, moving or stationary targets on the ground with thrust port, with autopilot delay or without thrust port. Thrust ports. Either you can simply release a vehicle from the aircraft and it will go there. It can also have its own thrust ports, uh, I mean depending on the mission of course actually. So, this is the type of thing what you are looking at you want to release a vehicle uh, from air let us say and there is a target ground moving target actually it can be stationary it can go in a constant direction it can take some maneuvering path whatever uh, may be the road condition is like that or it takes intensive uh, maneuvers uh, uh, intentional maneuvers just to evade the target or what I am just to evade the attacking missile something like that actually. So, it can be either stationary or moving in a constant direction or moving in some sort of a time varying acceleration actually. Okay, so, not only the vehicle has to be the vehicle has to be guided or the missile has to be guided in such a way that the ultimately it should not only fall on the target, but the velocity vector should also give rise to this desired uh, I mean flight path angle gamma m f and desired psi m f both together actually. Okay, so, this is the problem that you are looking at actually here. The dynamics uh, missile model and target model are typically done that way. Remember, uh, even though instruments are available for extracting target information. It cannot be full information per se. So, typically target models are done in kinematic sense. Wherever the missile model, you have the it is a sensor system and not only that, if the sensors uh, information can be extracted for the, for the autopilot actually. So, that means, uh, this the sensor information is more detailed in the, as far as your own vehicle is concerned and hence, uh, detailed model can be used for the missile. Target is uh, simplified uh, kind of uh, kinematic more. 
like a kinematic model basically. The state equations are like that, control is like that, again there was a necessity of this, uh, this normalization and all. So, we have done this normalization ok. And as I told the target uh, acceleration can have, uh, can be either 0 that means just a straight line movement, it can be constant a y t that means uh, some sort of a constant turning and it can have also this waving sort of sinusoidal thing periodic maneuver actually. So, in let it be anything uh, uh, still the algorithm has to work actually and also remember this uh, this can they can change actually that means, uh, target can start with uh, the straight line movement on the way it can change its uh, strategy to constant or uh, maybe sinusoidal or combination of that actually. Well, what you are assuming here is the information is known to us actually uh, the, the what, what the target is doing is actually extracted in from an estimation algorithm on board. But that part you are neglecting here, you are assuming that ok, that part is done separately and it is the inf necessary information is available here actually. Alright, so these are the normalized dynamics and all. So, so substitute that, uh, these are the, st the discrete state equation and all uh, using say Mylar integration and all that. And then you, these are some of the results actually. Ok, you can see that uh, the we have put only a single angle constant here, ok, what you see here, ok. This this is the what the P n gives, ok, but this is what we want, ok, and it, there is an angle constant here, it has to be, be some sort of vertical here, actually. so it happens to be like that. And these dotted lines are the, the projection curves actually on the this two 2 D planes, one happens to be in the x y plane, this is the one, and then they happens to be in the uh, x z plane actually, and from x z plane you can see the angle is 90 right, here, ok. And uh, there is no angle constraint in the x y plane, so it is free anyway actually. You can also see there are uh, the comparison with respect to this lateral oscillation studies and all that. So, you see this, uh, this is uh, 1 and third uh, happens to be the same as it, one coming from MPSP, other coming from PN, and then 2 and 4 are some also similar. So, if you see 1 and third, okay, you can also see that the 1 is much more smoother than what is happening is third. And uh, the maximum value also happens to be low. This happens to be maximum value is something like uh, 3, 3.5 around, or here the maximum value is around 5 actually. Okay, so it is smoother. It is, uh, I mean, magnitude wise also there is a lot of advantage actually. Other the similar advantage happens to be the other other case as well actually. If you compare these two, this line happens to be much more smoother actually. Yeah. Okay, and the maximum value also happens to be lower. Anyway, so this is what it is. Then, uh, what about two angles now? Giving, uh, I mean, two desired angles and all that. You can still do that. The formulation allows that. So there are various combinations of uh, three different cases we have shown with two, I mean, different different desired angles and all that. Actually, you start with the same initial condition, but uh, suppose your desired angles are different, then what happens? Actually, you can very clearly see that uh, no matter what you desire, the algorithm is able to find out. And again, I, I emphasize here. It is not uh, extensive tuning, uh, which is typically done in industry, industry and all that. Case by case, depending on situation and things like that, uh, there are variations of PN guidance law, which will actually try to at, uh, kind of give you some angles and all that. So, people can attempt to doing that, but it requires heavy amount of tuning, scheduling and all sort of thing. This is absolutely not needed here. You just, uh, you just quote these numbers, whatever numbers you can feed it to the algorithm just before launch and then it will take you there actually. So, the, then this is a different one. So, we start with three different initial conditions, but as ultimately aim to the same condition actually, same, same position and same angles also basically. So, this is what is also again happening there, ok. The, the lateral oscillation advantages as well actually. The another plot, uh, there is something called a zero effort miss, uh, I mean the, the details you can see in a missile guidance book. And the zero effort is okay, from wherever I am, from there onwards, if I go with zero effort, that means lift, lift is zero actually from there onwards, then what happens actually? And you can see that the solid line and happens to be MPSP, which is much more less oscillatory, okay, much more smoother and less oscillatory, and hence there are a lot of additional advantages as well actually. Coming to another class of problem, this is a different class of problem, this uh, incoming things is actually a ballistic missile, you want to defend it before it destroys you and all that actually. In those settings also you have experimented our this logic. There is a different class of challenges again here, there is very high speed target and hence very less engagement time, very high line of sight rate and ultimately what you really require is zero miss distance rather 
and there also has to be some impact angle constraint directional warhead is uh, is also necessity but uh, but lattex saturation has to be accounted for but due to less dynamic pressure you want to engage the target in high altitude actually so high altitude means less dynamic pressure and uh, the lattex saturation uh, is a constraint there actually so here what you have done is uh, the you extended the logic of this loop design and all uh, you can think of taking out the loop Okay, this is what the conventional three-loop thing, and the, what you have done is you have taken out this, okay, the the outer loop sort of thing, and this essentially leads to this uh, so-called this partial integrated guidance and control, integrated guidance and control design sort of thing. Okay, so this is uh, this is what it is, uh, and uh, this uh, I mean there are advantages and all. I'll encourage that you you read this. Uh, uh, I mean references and all that actually. I will not take you through that, but essentially the, there is outer loop and there is inner loop. Outer loop operates on MPSP, inner loop operates on dynamic inversion actually. So, there is also application there. There are papers available also to read. So, in summary, in conclusion, MPSP technique is a very promising technique for, for optimal missile guidance in general, okay. And essentially, the, the various challenging problems you have solved, and I also encourage all of you to kind of put your hands on various different problems. You will say you will be, I am very sure you will be surprised to see the results in a very good way actually. All right, uh, so this is there are extensions available for MPSP as I told in the previous lecture, we have uh, proposed this MPSP, te MPSC techniques and there are uh, other techniques as well, GS generalized MPSP and all, I will talk about those in next class. And as I told, uh, this technique has found worldwide acceptance uh, slowly actually. Okay. Some of the references about uh, missile guidance, the the classical this air, air to ground missiles and all that, the impact angle constraint problem, you can see that uh, in this particular reference is already published. And uh, there is another application which talks about this uh, mid course guidance sort of thing with uh, alignment angle constraint, very close to the impact angle constraint for sort of problem, but a different class of uh, requirement sort of thing. You can see that also in this uh, this journal paper actually. Okay. And is it, this is the another journal paper which talks about energy insensitive guidance uh, of the ballistic missile sort of thing. So also available, uh, you can see details is out there. And this is the first paper which uh, from from which I have the I have discussed the previous lecture as well, which talks about this uh, the very basic paper which talks about the very first idea okay, available here. All right, so with that I'll I'll stop here this lecture. Thanks a lot.